Hey guys, it's Sarah with americantrucks.com and today we have a review and install of the ReadyLift 3.5 inch SST suspension lift kit fitting your 19 and newer Ram 1500 without the air ride and it does not fit classic models. This kit is perfect for the Ram owner who wants a lift solution for their truck but wants to keep their factory struts and springs. It will work well for those of you looking for a mild lift to make some more room for wheels and tires and give your truck a more level appearance. This kit provides three and a half inches of lift in the front thanks to the CNC machined billet aluminum top mount strut extension spacers as well as the CNC machined billet aluminum spring preload spacers. Together, these two spacers used for the front measure in at approximately three inches. Now you get a true three and a half inch lift in the front thanks to the suspension geometry achieved by installing both of these spacers. This kit provides two inches of rear lift as well thanks to the steel fabricated rear spring spacers which measure in at two inches from surface to surface. This kit also includes bump stop extensions to control compression. This kit maintains OEM ride quality and increases ground clearance. It also corrects the ball joint angle thanks to these steel upper control arms. By swapping out your factory upper control arms with these replacements, you get a corrected ball joint angle that's not gonna wear out your upper ball joint over time, which happens a lot of times when installing spacer lift kits. Now, depending on your year and model, stock tire sizes may vary. Because our model is a Rebel, our stock tire size is a 33, which is what you will see in this video. And with this lift kit installed, ReadyLift notes you can fit up to a 35 inch tire comfortably. So as far as price goes, this kit comes in at around $925, which is middle of the road price wise when compared to other options. And for your money, you are getting a full front and rear lift kit from a company known to make quality suspension components. So as far as the install goes, I'm giving this one a three out of three wrenches on the difficulty meter. It does feature a direct bolt up install that can be done within six hours, but you will want a professional alignment afterwards. So with that said, let's check out the install. For this install, we used an impact gun, but a regular ratchet will work just fine. You'll also need two 11 millimeter wrenches, 21, 14, and 16 millimeter wrenches, a pop clip removal tool, a pry bar, a bungee cord or similar tool, a cutoff wheel as well as a grinder, a grease gun, a hammer as well as a rubber mallet, a set of cutters or flush cutters, 30, 24, 21, 19, 18, 16, and 13 millimeter sockets, and you may also want a swivel extension. All right, so the first step in our uninstall, make sure your truck is in the air and you have a wheel removed. Next up, we're gonna remove the brake line bracket that's right on the top of the strut tower. Grab a 12 millimeter socket and let's get this removed. Now with this bolt out, we should have a little bit more slack so we won't, don't put too much tension on the brake line. Now just under the upper control arm, you'll see that the ABS line is attached to it. What we're gonna do is with a pop clip removal tool, Go ahead and get behind there and remove it from the control arm. Next up on the other side of the knuckle, we have the outer tie rod. What we're gonna do is remove that nut on the bottom of it. Grab a 21 millimeter socket and get it removed. Now you can go ahead and wiggle and remove that outer tie rod. If it doesn't come out by hand, you can tap the knuckle here. I would suggest if you do that, thread this nut back on so you don't damage the threads. Next up, we have a 21 millimeter socket. We're gonna remove the nut that's on our upper ball joint. And once we have it most of the way off, we're just gonna leave a few threads on the bottom here because we're gonna need to strike this top of the knuckle to release the upper ball joint. Now that we have the nut loosened up, we're gonna strike the top of the knuckle to release it from the upper ball joint. Now using a pry bar, you can pry down on the upper control arm. Remove that 21 millimeter nut and release the upper control arm. 
to release it out of the knuckle. Next up, we are gonna be removing the axle nut. We do have the top of our knuckle supported so we don't put too much tension on that brake line. We have a 36 millimeter axle nut here. So go ahead and grab a 36 millimeter socket and get it removed. Now with your 18 millimeter socket, remove the nut on the bottom of your sway bar end link where it attaches to your lower control arm. Now we have our lower control arm supported with a pole jack. You can also use a jack stand or floor jack. We're using a 24 millimeter socket and a 21 millimeter wrench. And we're gonna remove the bolt holding on the lower strut. And now we can use a rubber mallet to tap this bolt out. You can also use a socket on the other side and use your impact gun to drive it out. And now that the bolt is out on the bottom of the strut, we're gonna remove the three nuts holding on the top of our strut. Grab a 16 millimeter socket, or we're using a ratcheting wrench here. Go ahead and get them removed. Now with all of our bolts removed, we can remove the strut assembly off of the truck. All right, now in order to place our spring preload spacer, we need to compress our strut assembly, remove the top hat, and place it between the top hat and the spring. To do that, we do need a spring compressor. So if you don't have a spring compressor at home or you don't feel comfortable using one, you can definitely take this whole strut assembly to a shop and have them press it in there for you. Now what we're going to do is we're going to compress this entire assembly so we can remove that top hat. And once you see the gap between the bottom of your spring and that seat down there, you know the spring is compressed enough for us to remove the top hat. And once the spring is fully compressed, grab your 18 millimeter socket and go ahead and remove the nut on top of the strut. And once you have that nut loose, go ahead and remove it and remove the strut assembly out of the bottom. And pull the strut out from the spring. Once the strut is out, go ahead and decompress your spring all the way, letting the tension off. And once it is completely free, what we're gonna do is remove the top as well as the rubber bushing and the sleeve. Now what we're gonna do is disassemble this a tiny bit, remove this top hat from the sleeve and rubber bushing. Then what we're gonna do is leave this piece as is. The spacer is gonna go on top of that and then the hat goes on top of the spacer. Now this entire assembly can go back into your spring what you wanna do is make sure that the end of your spring lines up with the rubber bushing. With your spacer in place, you can now compress that spring again, enough that you can fit the entire strut back in the bottom of the spring. Then once your spring is compressed, go ahead and slide your strut assembly back through your spring and start to line it up with this bottom notch of your spring. Once it's fully seated, we're gonna reinstall this nut. Now ours was in pretty bad shape coming off, so we did grab a new factory nut. Go ahead and thread it on. And with your 18 millimeter socket, tighten it down.
Now we are back to our truck and we're gonna remove this upper control arm to replace it with the new one. What we're gonna do is grab a 21 millimeter socket. You may need a breaker bar to break this loose. Go ahead and loosen it up. Remove the flag nut as well as the bolts. All right, now go ahead and repeat that on the other side of the control arm to remove the other bolts. You may need a breaker bar to break this loose. And remove your control arm. All right, and now that we have our factory control arm uninstalled from our truck, we can check it out side by side with the ready lift control arm here. Now, as far as construction, this one features a steel cap on top, but it is composite underneath, where our ready lift control arm is completely tubular steel. Now, the most important difference here is what I mentioned a little bit earlier about the ball joint angle. Whenever you are lifting a truck and you leave the factory control arm in, you're not gonna get a very great ball joint angle, which can cause it to wear out prematurely. This new corrected angle will last much longer and it comes with a greasable ball joint as well. So with that said, let's go ahead and finish up our install. Now we can get that new upper control arm installed. Line up the bolts through each of the arms. and make sure the flag nut is installed on the other side. Then go ahead and install the factory bolts through the other side. Now, if I haven't mentioned already, make sure you have the proper control arm. These are side specific. You'll notice an opening towards the back and the logo towards the front. Then grab that 21 millimeter socket and tighten it down. Go ahead and repeat that on the other side. Now, before we can mount this spacer, I did want to point something out here. If you line it up and put it over your factory studs, just take a look that the factory studs are not sticking out past the spacer. If they are, like ours are, what we need to do is trim these down. Not a lot, but we basically need to take off just the end that's not threaded. So before we do that, what I'm going to do is thread on the factory nuts. And this will help just in case we nick one of the threads It'll straighten it out when we take the nut back off. Now you can either mark these or you can use the beginning of the threads as a guide. And again, you only need to take off as much as is sticking past the spacer. Now we're gonna use a cutoff wheel to remove the majority of this. You can use a grinder, because again, we're not taking off a ton. But go ahead and grab your tool and remove the excess of the factory stud. And then once the cut is made, I'm just gonna clean this up with a grinding wheel just to take the sharp edges off. This step is optional. Repeat that with the other two studs.
Now that we have all the studs trimmed and cleaned up, go ahead and install the spacer. And the factory nuts over top of the factory studs. Then with your 16 millimeter socket, go ahead and tighten these down. And now that we have the spacer installed, go ahead and line up the studs with the openings in your strut tower. Keep in mind, the strut itself will be about 180 degrees out. And then with the help of a pry bar, go ahead and line up the bottom. and slide it into place. And once the strut assembly is finally in place, go ahead and thread the included nuts over top of each of the studs. Now we're gonna leave these loose for now until we get the large bolt through the bottom of the strut assembly. And then with the help of a pry bar, go ahead and line up that factory bolt and get it reinstalled. If it's not quite lining up nicely, you can use a rubber mallet to tap it in place. Now you can install the factory nut. Then with a 21 millimeter wrench and a 24 millimeter socket, go ahead and tighten it down. Now we're moving on to the nuts on top of the strut assembly with a 14 millimeter socket or ratcheting wrench. Go ahead and tighten these down. Now we do have a jack underneath our knuckle. And what we're gonna do is line up the upper control arm with the top of the knuckle. And we're using a jack just to help compress it a little bit so we can get closer. Go ahead and use a pry bar to line up the control arm. and then install a spacer and one of the included castle nuts on the bottom. Now what we're gonna do with a 19 millimeter socket, tighten down that castle nut for the upper ball joint. Then once that nut is all the way tight and in place, install the cotter pin through. And then using a pliers or similar tool, open it up and lock it in place. With that in place, we now need to grease the ball joint, the grease gun here. I'm just popping it over top of the fitting, the grease fitting on top. And we're just going to pump it up and insert enough grease to expand the rubber in the ball joint below it. And just be careful not to over grease these. Now we can reinstall the factory axle nut. And with your 36 millimeter socket, go ahead and tighten it down. 
Now you can install your outer tie rod into the knuckle. Grab the factory hardware and get it threaded on. Then with your 21 millimeter socket, go ahead and tighten it down. Now you can reinstall the factory bolt holding your brake line onto the strut tower. And with your 13 millimeter socket, go ahead and tighten it down. And finally, reinstall your sway bar end link. Now if you're not doing both sides simultaneously, I would leave this disconnected until every side is done and then install both of these last. But once you're ready, grab an 18 millimeter socket and tighten it down. All right, now that the passenger side is complete, repeat all of those steps to install the driver's side. Make sure everything is torqued to spec and once you're done, we'll move on to the rear install. All right, so now the front is complete. We're gonna begin the rear. Now we have our truck in the air and we have the axle supported by pole jacks. If you're on the ground, you can use jack stands or a floor jack. The first thing we're gonna do is remove the bolts on the bottom of our shock. With a 21 millimeter wrench and a 21 millimeter socket, go ahead and remove this bolt. Now you may need to go up or down on the jack in order to take the tension off of the shock and remove the bolt. Now we are on the other side of our axle looking at our sway bar end link. What we're gonna do is with our 16 millimeter socket, remove the bolt holding on the top of the end link. Now that we have the end link disconnected, we also need to disconnect this bracket that holds on the brake line. Grab a 13 millimeter socket. Remove this bolt and pull the bracket out of the frame. And just keep an eye on these lines and make sure there's no tension on them as we lower the axle. Now that our shock and end link are disconnected, we can go ahead and lower down the axle. Now because this is a straight axle truck, it may be easier to do both sides simultaneously, but either way, go ahead and lower down your pole jack or your floor jack to take the tension off that spring. Now, if you need more droop to your axle to remove the springs, you can loosen up the bolts on the track bar. Go ahead and grab a 21 millimeter socket and loosen these up. And with a 21 millimeter wrench and 21 millimeter socket, plus you may want a swivel extension, go ahead and loosen the other end as well. You may also need to loosen, but do not remove the bolts on your upper and lower trailing arm with a 24 millimeter socket and a 21 millimeter wrench. Go ahead and loosen these up. Now continue to lower down that axle until your spring comes completely loose. Then go ahead and remove the spring as well as the rubber isolator on top. Now we have just the rubber isolator on the table here and before we can get our spacer installed, what we need to do is trim these two posts so that the spacer can sit nicely on top of here. I have a flush cutters here, you can use a regular cutters, but try to get this as flush with the top as you can. Go ahead and snip these rubber posts. Now while we have some room with our spring out, we're also gonna install this bump stop extension. Now these are identical side to side, but what we wanna line up is the hole on this side for the passenger side. There'll also be a hole just behind it. And with our hex bolts, a washer on each side, and a lock nut. Go ahead and line it up with the holes in the factory bracket. And then go ahead and line up your hex bolt 
with a washer and lock washer. Through the front of the bump stop extension. And again, we're on the passenger side, so we will be on the right side of this bracket. Now we're gonna grab two 11 millimeter wrenches. I have one ratcheting wrench here as well. And then what we're gonna do is tighten this down. Go ahead and repeat that with your other bolt. Now we're gonna place the modified rubber isolator on top of the spring and place the spacer inside that. Now we can go ahead and line it up on the truck. And you may have to lower down your axle a bit. But go ahead and slide it in. Now at this point, you're gonna to wanna to catch the other side up to this point. Make sure both springs are in with their spacer on top, and then we can raise the axle up together and bolt everything back down. Go ahead and raise the axle up until the shock lines up with its mount and reinstall the factory hardware. Then with your 21 millimeter socket and wrench, go ahead and tighten it down. Now reinstall the sway bar end link. And with your 16 millimeter socket, tighten it down. Then reinstall the bracket that holds your brake line to the frame. And with your 13 millimeter socket, tighten it down. And now we have the truck on the ground so the suspension can settle. And what we're gonna do is tighten down this bar as well as the trailing arms. Grab a 21 millimeter socket and a 21 millimeter wrench and tighten this down. And repeat that on the other side. This one is a flag nut, so all you'll need is a 21 millimeter socket. Now grab that 21 millimeter wrench and 24 millimeter socket. Go ahead and tighten down your trailing arm bolt. And once both sides in the rear are installed, make sure you torque everything to spec and you will need a professional alignment afterwards. But that is gonna do it for the review and install of this lift kit. And remember for all things Ram, keep it at americantrucks.com.